Hey guys, what is going on? This is Coded Steel, and welcome to the final part of the Ohm's Law calculator tutorial stuff for App Inventor. And uh, if you guys remember last time, um, I just want to do a quick check with you guys and make sure you guys caught this part last time. Under the voltage, current, and resistance text box, just make sure you click numbers only checkbox. We'll get into why we need to do that or why that needs to be checked here in just a second. So anyways, if you remember last time, I showed you how to, well, I kind of gave you a brief little thing about how to do a comment, just right clicking and whatever else, simple enough. And we created the procedure boxes for the calculating the current and voltage and resistance. So now we're gonna actually go ahead and create the remainder of the blocks interface. So what we need to do to do that is we need to go ahead and drag in this when clear dot click and when calc dot click. And basically the reason why we need to draw uh, draw those in is just as you guys know, we want everything that happens in this app to happen synchronously with the push of a button. So we push a button and then we want a set of instructions to execute. So that is why we drag these in here. What set of instructions do we want to execute? Well, what we actually want to do here is we want to, when this happens, I'm going to copy, paste, paste. And, uh, well, we can set these all together. That's fine. And we want to do voltage, the current, and the resistance. And we want to set them all to empty. And copy that, paste it, paste it, drag that in, drag that in and then drag that all under this. So basically, it should make sense kind of what happens when this button's clicked. Uh, all of the stuff within the voltage, current, and resistance checkboxes will be cleared. And we can even test that in our app here. We can hit the clear contents button, and we see indeed that the contents clear out now when we go ahead and we do that. So 258 and then three, six, nine, or something like that, and we click clear contents, and lo and behold, they completely clear out. So we can see that now we've added functionality to the clear button. So now what do we need to do? We need to add functionality to the calculator button. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, what I need to do is I need to draw, drag in these two AND blocks. And I know you guys know what AND blocks do by now because we have discussed them in our previous t uh, uh, tutorial with the login interfaces. When the username and password are true, then do something. So I know we've done that. But I know I've showed you guys that before. And we need to drag in one equals block. So, well, I could have just drag dragged in one AND block, but whatever. We're going to need a few of them anyway. And then I also need to draw in an IF block here. So what's going to happen here is this. We're going to have three things that are going to happen. Three conditions that we need to look for. So that's why I need to go if, and then I need to click on this blue rectangle and add two else ifs. So I think we've discussed else ifs before, else's and else ifs, I believe so. Uh, but if not, else if is a condition that gets tested if the if fails. So if the if fails, then the else if uh, it checks the else if, if this passes, then it skips this one. If all of those failed and I added in an else, then the else would execute. So if I added in an else, no matter what, one of these conditions will execute, whether it'll be the if, the else if, the else, this other else if, or the else. One of them will execute each time this button gets clicked. So we don't want that to happen. For this case, we want one of these conditions to get selected. And if one of them isn't true, then we want it to do nothing. So that's the reason for the if, else if, or if, the else if, and the other else if. So we're kind of getting there now to where we need to be, but we're still not obviously there completely yet. There's a few other things that we actually need to do. We need to pull in the uh, blah, 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 where is it at? Um, right here, voltage.text, and then we need to copy and paste, and we need to get the current and the resistance text dot text so if you guys remember what this stuff does because we dealt with text boxes 
this gets the information in the voltage current and resistance tech bo text boxes so simple straightforward we we know all of that stuff already and um basically what we need to do now is this we're going to need to take and drag this and block into this and block kind of just follow along with what i'm doing here for a second it's it might not make sense to you guys i don't know um but if it doesn't i promise i will explain it in just a second if so what's going to happen here is if the voltage here well like i said i'm getting ahead of myself again um I'll get to in a second what's going on. Like, just follow what I'm doing. Current dot text, resistance dot text, and then not equal to that, and then not equal to that, and then drag those in there. Okay, cool. Then, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do one of these and then I'm gonna explain to you guys what is going on because it's always easier to do it that way. I can confuse myself when I'm even sitting here doing this. So I don't wanna do that. I wanna be able to explain to you guys exactly what's going on. So we wanna set that to whatever. We go to the procedures and we call, no, not Cal current, Cal voltage. And we call um, whatever's in both of these fields. Okay, blah, 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 nope, wrong. Resistance. All right, now that one of these is done, I can explain to you guys exactly what is going on now. All right, when the button is clicked, it's going to go through, and right now there's no else if conditions to test here. So there's only one if condition to test. So right now, if this code was left the way it is at this moment, it would go ahead, and it, whenever the button's pushed, if the voltage text field is empty, and the current text field and the resistance text fields are not empty, then we want to calculate the voltage and put it in the voltage text box here. So that's exactly what's happening, is... If this field is empty and these fields are not empty, meaning they're populated with numbers, and we know they're only going to be populated with numbers because of this. If I go back to this screen right here, when I have numbers only checked, you guys can see it here in the app, only numbers will be capable of being entered into those fields. No matter which of these fields I click on, as you guys can see, only the number pad pops up. The letter pad does not pop up, meaning that only numbers are capable of being entered into this, these uh, text fields. So that is what the numbers only checkbox does for you, is it makes it absolutely impossible to enter in letters, which is what we want. You want a math calculator. We don't know how to handle numbers. Number, you, you can't do division, subtraction, and addition with numbers. Well, I guess you could, but you'd have to cr cr uh, turn them into an ASCII value, which essentially you'd still be taking the letters and numbers and symbols and still be converting them into numbers to do math on them. So technically, you can't do math with numbers. <laughs> so that's why we have to go ahead. Or you, or did I just say you can't do math with numbers? Oh, my gosh. You can't do math with letters. All right, sorry about that. You guys are going to catch that one, and then you're going to catch me being stupid. All right, <laughs> but anyways, you guys can see here that this is what's going to happen. So basically, we need to do the same thing, but for the other. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this down and make this nice, nice and easy. And then I uh, paste... Drag that one in, and then copy and paste, and then drag that one in. All right. So now we just got to go through, and we got to change all of this stuff. So this one would be equals. That one still be not equals. And then we would call calculate the current. And then we would go ahead and change this to voltage. And this 
to resistance and then drag that in there and then say change the current to that this one would be resistance this one would be empty this one would be not empty that one would be not empty we would call calculate resistance we would change this to voltage and plug that back in and this will stay current and we plug that back in so there you go guys believe it or not just like that the app is completed and it was very easy very quick I probably could have done this all in one video, but it would have been extra long, like over a half hour. So I figured, you know, what the heck, I might as well do this in two videos. So one more time, I'm going to go over everything that is going on here. We created calculate voltage, calculate current, and calculate resistance procedures. All three of these procedures return results, and all three of these procedures get past values. So, um, what happens here when a button gets clicked, when, calc when, uh, when cal calculate gets clicked, if the voltage text box is empty and the current text box and the resistance text box are not empty, which is symbolized by the equals with the, cross with the slash through it, so if they're not equal to empty, then I want to set the voltage box, call our procedure, calculate voltage, which is this one over here, and pass it the current and the resistance. So this is going to call our return block, or we're gonna call this procedure over here, and it's gonna pass it both what, uh, whatever values are in the current and resistance blocks. So these two values arrive in this procedure over here, and then they get plugged into here, multiplied together, and that result gets shifted, backed out to the text box, and displayed in the text box. So that is exactly what's happening. And this, um, the else if is the same, basically, so if this condition fails, then the else if executes. If this else if fails, then this else if, the other else if ex, or tries to execute. And if all three of them fail, then nothing will happen and it'll just, it'll just do nothing. So basically, if all, the only way that all three, or the only way that all three of these could fail is if all of the text fields are full or all of the text fields are empty. That is the only way, or one of the text fields is, and uh, one of our two of the text fields are empty. So those are the only three conditions that could make this fail, and then it'll do nothing. So we could, if we wanted to, add an else statement and say, you know, yeah, uh, something's wrong or something like that. But you know, it's kind of obvious that if something didn't happen correctly, then you obviously had empty fields or you had completely full fields, or you only entered in one parameter, which if you only enter in one parameter anyway, you can't calculate a value anyways. <laughs> so uh, that's exactly what's going on with these things. Very straightforward and easy to understand, I think. Um, just remember, um, with this being the new topic, obviously, this calculate voltage block just does everything that's in this block. So I could have 10,000 instructions inside of this thing actually be very hard to have 10,000 instructions inside of this result block because I just have one big blob of mess going all the way across the screen but in one of the procedures that doesn't return you can see the do loop down here which is symbolized by that little notch there and then the do obviously alongside I could put a whole series of instructions going all the way down and it can continuously go on for quite a while so probably with the result turn block they kind of figured you were probably only going to put one or two instructions in there anyways. So, anyways, uh, now, oh, and one other thing, and then I'll show you the actual application, because that's the only thing I haven't done yet. And when clear is clicked, we already saw what happened. You set the voltage to empty, set the current blocks to empty, set the resistance to empty. All right, cool. So now let's see if this works, how it, or if it, what, whatever, what, what happens. Okay, so I click the voltage box. I'm gonna enter in 18 volts, just to make things nice and simple. And then I'm gonna enter in six amps, which is really high amperage, but that's okay. And then I'm just going to hit the calculate button. And I should expect to see three, hopefully, in the resistance blocks. And we'll see if we do. And we do. There you go. So 18 divided by six is three. So let's just test this the other way. We'll do five and four and just make sure our result is 20 for the voltage. 
and it is 20. Awesome. So, so far our app is working just the way we wanted it to do. Uh, the last thing we got to do is do 97 volts and, uh, I don't know, uh, 9.7 amps. Oh, 97 amps. Sure, whatever. That's fine. And then we see that we get 1 ohm. Uh, wait a minute. I don't think we did the uh, current, did we? No, oh, jeez. I don't know why I'm... <sighs> okay, uh, 40... 942. Calculate. Okay, we see it comes out 942 amps. I, I'm sorry. That was a very, this very poor example. But we can see that this calculator is working. And I'll even, I'll even put that in. Oh, no, I won't because i got to clear up this cell. Sometimes it's easier than just hitting clear contents just to backspace it. 47.1. I'm assuming that that's the correct answer. I don't know what 942 divided by 20 is off the top of my head. But that seems to be the right answer. So there we go, guys. We can see clearly that this is this program is working for us and that it's doing exactly what we asked it to do. So, I mean, yeah, there's your first app. As you can see, we made very small cosmetic changes to the application. Uh, the other one, I didn't have the volts, the amps, and the ohms next to it. I figured those would be nice little additives to add to it just to kind of, you know, label what the quantity in the box actually was. So that was just something that I kind of made. What could you do with this if you wanted to take it further? Well, you could make it to where you could put a user selectable pallet box over on the side and select maybe amps, volts, or milli ohms, or mega ohms, or kilo ohms, or mega amps, or mega volts, or kilo volts, or kilo amps, or giga amps, or giga volts, so on and so forth. Femto amps, femto volts, which you guys probably don't even know what femto means, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but you could put a user selectable box on here. And you know what? I'm thinking that that might be, I was trying, I was tossing it around in my head wondering what I was going to do with the next episode. But you know what? That might be what I do, maybe. Maybe that'll be an actually a good uh, a good little uh, thing here. You can see this thing called a spinner right here. A spinner is an element that when you click on it, it allows you to add uh, or select different things and when they're selected you can go ahead in here and you can look for the spinner and then you can say when spinner after selecting and then you could return whatever the selection is so you know what that is actually what we're going to do in the next episode is i'm we're going to take this app one step further and allow you to select kill uh different parameters for the voltage amperes ohms that'll probably be a very short tutorial so That'll be actually cool. It's a nice little new, it's something new that to show you guys. So I uh, can't wait to show that to you guys, and I will see you guys in your next App Inventor interface tutorial. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.